Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on Python libraries related to data science. I have a question for you dear friends and the question is, are you a data science enthusiast and a part of a Python ecosystem? Are you wondering about the different Python libraries to improve your efficiency? How are they roughly differentiated into various subdomains? And you don't want to miss out any of the important Python libraries? Then you have reached the right place. Now before we dig deep more about into learning Python libraries for data science, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first we are going to start with Python and its feature. Then we are going to discuss about applications of Python. Moving ahead, we are going to discuss about libraries related to data mining. Then we are going to discuss libraries related to data processing, analysis and modeling. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with libraries related to data visualization. So let's start with Python and its features. Python is the most used programming language in data science. Python has many advantages over other programming languages, like it is easy to debug, it is object oriented, it has high number of active developers, it is open source, and when it comes to data analysis and data visualization, Python libraries set way ahead of many other languages. Now let's discuss the applications of Python. Python provides a number of useful libraries and these libraries help in numerical analysis, statistical analysis, data modeling, data visualization and whatnot. These libraries assist in various domains like data mining, data processing analysis and modeling and data visualization. Now we will look into some of the most important libraries and the first process is the data mining. Now if I want to discuss about the libraries related to data mining, the first process in data science is getting the data from the various sources onto the system. So that is data mining. So first we look at the libraries that is used in data mining and the first one is Scrappy. Scrappy is an open source library which is used for data scrapping. It is used for developing crawling programs to extract the structured data from the web. It can also be used to extract you know data through APIs. I hope so it's clear to you what's the use case of Scrappy in data mining. The next library we have is Beautiful Soap. Beautiful Soap is another Python library which is used for data scrapping and extraction. The library gets its name that poorly marked up web pages are often called tag soup. Therefore, the library is known as the Beautiful Soap. It is far more flexible than any other scrapping library in Python. The data scrapped through Beautiful Soap can be arranged into various formats and not into only CSV. Now after the data is collected, we process the data for analyzing and modeling purposes. So the first library which we are going to discuss is the NumPy. If I talk about NumPy, NumPy stands for numerical Python. As the name suggests, it helps in analyzing the numerical data. It contains an array package. This contains a multi-dimensional and extremely powerful array object. NumPy also provides various functions and operations that can be performed on the NumPy arrays like add, remove, reshape, indexing, etc. NumPy forms a base for other or more complex libraries like Pandas, SciPy and Scikit-learn. The next library is Pandas. If I talk about Pandas, Pandas is an open source library that is made mainly for working with relational or labeled data or both easily and intuitively. It provides various data structures and operations for manipulating the numerical data and the time series data. This library is built on the top of the NumPy library. Pandas is fast and it has high performance and productivity for users. If I talk about the advantages of using Pandas are the first one it is fast and efficient for manipulating and analyzing the data. Data from different file or objects can be easily loaded. There is an easy handling of the missing data which is represented as NAN in floating point as well as non floating point data. Then the factor comes up is the size mutability. Columns can be inserted and deleted from the data frame and they are also higher dimensional objects. Data set merging and joining is also present. 
it provides time series functionality and finally it is a powerful group by functionality for performing split apply combine operations on data sets now many of you would be wondering why pandas should be used for data science pandas are generally used for data science this is because pandas are used in conjunction with other libraries that are also used for data science it is actually built on the top of the numpy library which means that lot of structures of numpy are used or replicated in pandas the data produced by pandas are often used as input for plotting functions of matplotlib statistical analysis in scipy and machine learning algorithms in the scikit-learn pandas program can be run from any text editor but it is recommended to use jupyter notebook for this as a jupyter given the ability to execute code in particular cell rather than executing the entire file if i talk about the jupyter jupyter also provides an easy way to visualize pandas data frames and plot i hope so now you would have got answer that why pandas is used for data science with that let's move to the next library our next library is tensorflow if i talk about tensorflow tensorflow is also an open source library which was created by the google brains team at google for their internal research now tensorflow is also a python friendly open source library which is generally used for numerical computation that makes machine learning and developing neural networks faster and easier machine learning is actually a complex discipline but implementing machine learning models is far less daunting than it is used to be and thanks to the framework such as tensorflow tensorflow can train and run deep neural networks for handwritten digit classification image recognition the word embeddings recurrent neural networks sequence to sequence model for machine translation and natural language processing it is also based on simulations best of all tensorflow supports production prediction at scale with the same models which are used for training it also has a broad library of pre-trained models that can be used in your own projects but the question is seeing this picture you would be wondering how does a tensorflow works tensorflow allows developers to create data flow graphs which are structures that describes how data moves through a graph or a series of processing nodes each node in the graph represent a mathematical operation and each connection or edge between the nodes is a multidimensional data array or a tensor tensorflow applications can be run on most of the any targets that is convenient which is a local machine a cluster in a cloud a ios device or the android devices the cpus or gpus if you use google's own cloud you can run tensorflow on google's custom tensorflow processing unit which is the tpu i hope so you would have got idea about tensorflow now let's move to the next library which is keras if i talk about keras keras was also developed by google it also runs on the top of tensorflow it acts as an interface for tensorflow library keras is built for fast and hassle free experimentation on the neural networks it provides a good option so if you don't want to deep dive into tensorflow then you can use keras for your projects now let's discuss the next library which is pytorch if i talk about pytorch it is also an open source library which is developed by facebook for developing and testing machine learning modules pytorch expertise lies more in deep neural networks tensorflow and pytorch are the major competitors of each other whenever you use deep learning technologies like object recognition text recognition face recognition or chatbots there is a high possibility that the architecture was developed by either pytorch or tensorflow now let's move forward and discuss our next library which is scipy scipy stands for scientific python it is used for complex scientific computations it is built on the numpy library it is extensively used for scientific and technical operations like calculus linear algebra differential equation integration and statistical computation i hope so you would have got idea regarding the use cases for scipy now 
let's discuss our next library which is related to data processing, analysis and modeling. And our final library is the scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is actually built on the top of many familiar libraries like NumPy, Pandas and SciPy. It mainly focuses on data modeling. Scikit-learn is used to create models for predictive data analysis. I hope so you would have got idea regarding the use cases for the scikit-learn. So after the data is processed and modeled, it is time to visualize the data to get the important insights out of it. Therefore, now we will see the libraries related to data visualization. And our first library is the matplotlib. If I talk about matplotlib, it is used for data visualization in Python. It provides all the necessary graphs and charts for univariate and multivariate analysis. It is used to create industry standard and publication standard plots. Matplotlib contains an object-oriented API that can be used to integrate plots and charts into applications. I hope so, you would have got idea regarding the matplotlib. Now let's move forward and discuss our next library, which is Seaborn. If I talk about Seaborn, it is built on the top of the matplotlib library. As it is built on the top of matplotlib, it has higher interface level and provides cleaner plots than matplotlib for visualization. It contains set of different built-in themes. It provides extensive plots like heat maps, pair plots that are used for multivariate analysis. I hope so, you would have got idea regarding Seaborn. Now let's move forward and discuss our final library for data visualization which is Bokeh. Bokeh is fully independent of matplotlib. Bokeh is used to create interactive plots in the browser using JavaScript widgets. Like Seaborn, Bokeh to assist us in creating complex visualization, but it majorly focuses on interactiveness. Its interactive functionalities help in creating complex visualization like dashboards, network graph, etc. Now, after all discussing the libraries related to data visualization, analysis and modeling and also for numerical computation, I have come to certain conclusion that there are thousands to lack of Python libraries available in the ecosystem today and the list only covers the most popular and the most known libraries. Also, we covered the most important libraries from all domains to give you a brief idea about the areas of your interest. These are the libraries which are used by professionals to work on the day-to-day -day basis. You got a good understanding of how these libraries function with each other and also how more complex libraries are built upon the core ones. There are many more complex libraries that you can read about. Sky is the limit of knowledge and you can learn more and more as per as your interest. That's all for today's video. I hope so guys you enjoyed our today's video on Python libraries for data science. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.